Okay. Yes, I've started recording now. <clears throat> Should have let me know that earlier. I would have brought my special RTE voice. Um, but okay, so the senior cycle choices or senior cycle options that are are, are available. Okay, the first of the options are, is transition year. So those of you in third year who are thinking about taking transition year, okay, that's the option that you will be making. And you don't need to look at the subjects that you will be choosing next year if you're doing transition year, because the whole course is included. Um, the subjects that you will be tasting, etc., all are chosen and are all done as part of transition year. When you are doing transition year next year, then we will be going through the subjects uh, and making choices again, this time next year as well. So... Transition year, if you choose that one, you don't need to pick or choose subjects. The second option that's listed here is QQI level four. Uh, and I'll mention, explain what QQI is in a moment. But if you are choosing to do QQI level four, again, you do not need to choose the subjects. Okay. The course is already set up for you. The subjects that are available are already done for you. And Ms. Ryan will talk a little bit to that in a second. The third one that's listed here is leaving certificate. It's called the established leaving certificate. It is the leaving certificate as everybody would generally know it, okay? So your regular fifth year and your sixth year where you choose subjects at higher level or at ordinary level. And for this one, you must choose the subjects, okay? There are seven subjects that you will be taking for the leaving certificate if that's your route. So if you're going directly from third year into fifth year of established leaving certificate, then you will need to be taking the, choosing the subjects. And the last one on the slide here is the LCVP links. It's known as, particularly in, in our school, as links, okay? It's the Leaving Certificate Vocational Program. It's an add-on part to the Leaving Certificate. It's not considered to be a subject in itself, okay? But it does provide points. So, but I don't want people to get kind of caught up on it, okay? It will be offered as a bonus or as an add-on to students who are going directly into the established Leaving Certificate. Okay, so hopefully we'll be able to get to the next slide. Okay, so transition year, we said, if you're taking it, that's perfectly fine. You don't have to do anything about it. But what is QQI? We mentioned it as the second option there, QQI level four. Okay, so QQI is just the name that is given. It's called Quality and Qualifications Ireland. Okay, so QQI stands for Quality and Qualifications Ireland. And every course you do... Can I stop you there for a second, um, um, Sean? Just yep. a student has said they can't see the slides. Just to check, can okay. everybody see the slides? Just give me a thumbs up and show if you can see the slides. Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Sorry for the disruption, just somebody couldn't see the slides. Okay. Okay. Let's see if I can go back again now. I'm being inundated <laughs> with the things that I'm looking to try to get. Okay, let me see if I can go back. Okay, so QQI is just the qualifications and quality or quality and qualifications Ireland. Every course that you do no matter what it is, okay, has a level on this QQI qualification system. And it tells us a little bit about how much is involved in the course that you studied, how long the course has lasted, what you should know by the end of the course, okay, what's been involved, what kind of testing or exams have been involved. So I've given the example of it's a little bit like, you know, different levels in the computer games. OK, in order to get to the next level, you have to have completed the level before. But sometimes you can actually skip one or two, depending on how the game is like. Or a little bit like if you're, you know, the different color belts that you get in mixed martial arts or karate or judo. Uh, if you were to walk out into the, the gym floor and you saw somebody standing opposite you wearing a, a karate black belt. OK, I think you might have an idea that this is probably a pretty serious person to be taking on in a, in a fight. You should have an idea in your head as to what their ability is like. The QQI levels tell us something similar in relation to education and what you have done. Okay. This big fra framework or our picture here is the framework of qualifications. And if you, you know, I'm going to show the inside part of it or, or point to the inside part of it, there are levels going from level one through to level 10. Okay. We are down here at level three is the junior certificate. Okay. So 
everything else is listed out, but I'm not going to go into detail with it. But just to show you that every qualification that you can do from a, a short course, a certificate course, right up to a master's and a PhD are all listed in this. OK, so the QQI is that. First thing to say to you is that you already have, OK, one QQI already. The third year is you will have it by the time that you get to the end of this year. The junior certificate is QQI level three. So you all have one. A level four is now an option for you as an option for people moving on from third year. OK, so you have a choice of doing a level four, QQI level four. Ms. Ryan will talk about that in a moment. Level 4.5 is the leaving certificate okay it's the established leaving certificate as we have level five is a post leaving certificate course that you can do for one year after your leaving certificate there's a level six okay it's advanced certificate you can do it it's a craft apprenticeship so if you do an apprenticeship you'll get a level six if you do a two-year course in an it it's a level six so you're probably getting the idea that everything has has listed or is listed as a level okay and as a result of that you know what your story is. So at that one, I'm actually going to turn back and ask Miss uh, Miss Ryan if she would come on board here and talk about QQI level four courses. And I will stop sharing mine. Okay, I'm going to take control then. Yep. Yep. Right. So I'm trying to find our slides. Um, all right. This isn't me. This isn't my stuff. Am I supposed to? I thought my PowerPoint, Sean, sorry, was inside in here. I haven't got it ready. That's great. Does Miss yeah. O'Leary have any chance of one? Miss uh, O'Leary, have you got it? I thought you put my slides into your presentation. If you give me a minute. Yeah, take your time. No worries. Yeah. Um, oh, good God. Sorry about this. But anyway, look, for those of you who are struggling with the current junior cert, the level four that we have on offer in the school is what we call a general module, a general learning module. So like Mr. Lander said, you don't choose your subjects. We choose them for you um, to complete the award. Actually, I can't find it at all. Sorry. Um, I'll, I'll just put it. I'll just it up yeah, there, Claire. Thank There's you. No problem. Yeah. Um, so as I was saying, for those of you who are struggling with the junior cert and find the jump up to leave insert might be too much of a, um, a, a transition, the level four is um, is an in-between step. Um, so it's a smaller step that you're going to take. You don't kind of sit traditional subjects. What we call them are modules. And to get a major award, you need 90 credits. So we have nine subjects that we do within the school. So you'll see that there's a one called communications, which is like an English module, maths, IT, which is computers. You will do work experience um, and then you'll do a, a lab kind of science subject, a wood work subject. And then there's a home ec subject and art. Um, so if we move on to the next slide. OK, the difference here with us and a traditional leave insert is all of our modules are um, a build up, a gathering of work. It's a collection of work and a skills demonstration. So you'll see that I've two in yellow, maths and information technology, and it says theory 20%. They're the only two out of the nine subjects where we have um, some form of a written exam. Um, and even with that, it's only 20% of the overall grade. So um, it's when we say skills demonstration, it might be you inside in the kitchen baking bread. It could be um, making sausages, sausage rolls, sorry, or you're inside an art and you're drawing a picture. Um, in personal effectiveness, it could be a collection of work. So again, it could be doing a group task. Um, it might be filling in a worksheet. It might be preparing a PowerPoint. Um, yep, if you want to skip on then to the last, the. No, go on again. Final yeah. one? Yeah, and we'll go on again. Okay, and yeah, the route, progression route number five. So once you get your award at 11.4, where do you go? What do you do? So some people might decide they're going to go straight into work. Um, some people might go straight into work, but also do a night course or a short course in welding. Others might decide, well, I've done a general learning level four. I might decide this time around I'm interested in sports and go do a level four in sports recreation. 
Um, and others then might decide, look, I'm going to head and get into a level five. Again, it might be subject specific, it could be retail office skills. But the, the cornerstone subjects of communications, IT skills, work experience and maths are kind of the foundations to an awful lot of the level four and the level five courses. And whereas you might need a lot of support initially inside in the class completing your work, by the end of it, you'll become an independent kind of learner. We'll have given you those skills. And the other, I suppose, thing to realise about the level four is all of the work is done in school. So all of your work, your classwork is completed in school. There's no such homework in the traditional sense of homework. And we will be holding um, another meeting specifically for those of you who are going to do the QQI um, in the school. We'll meet the students and we'll meet their parents and we'll do that before the end of the year. And that's it. That's that's kind of um, our introduction to the QQI option within the school. So I'm going to hand you back to Sean. Thanks very much, Claire. OK, and I'll try to go back to <coughs> sharing my own screen now as well. And that may be a lot less easier than I think. OK, so I'm going to have to scroll down a little bit more further. Thanks very much, Claire, for that. Thank you. Um, Sorry. It is, you know, very clear and has been very successful over the last number of years uh, as to what the QQI Level 4 has achieved in relation to the students. OK, so again, I would encourage students who are thinking about it and I would encourage parents who are thinking about it to, to think about it very seriously and even have a contact or a chat with uh, either Claire or, or Mary Little or, or again Elaine or myself in relation to, to it as an option. OK. So rather than doing anything like that. So moving on to the next slide or the next option, transition year. OK, and again, this is a one slide that I'm going to talk about here because I know that Ms Mulcahy, who is the transition year coordinator and Mulcahy, uh, will talk about this in more detail next week. OK, so there is a, a, going to be a talk specifically for students who are applying for transition year. But just to say that it is a one year program. OK, there's no need to choose subjects because, like Claire was saying, in relation to QQI4, the subjects and the options that are available are within it. It does help with maturity, so it gives you a little bit of time more to mature, but also to mature in terms of your own ability to reflect and think about, coordinate or organise yourself, to taste subjects at leaving certificate standard. OK, so instead of general science that you would have had in a junior certificate, you may have a look at chemistry, specifically biology, physics, ag science. You'll have a look at the individual subjects that, that are, are involved. OK, and it even gives you the opportunity of trying different subjects that you may not have done in the junior certificate. So from that point of view, it gives a lot of opportunity to experience and, uh, and try new things. Um, before COVID, there was a lot of trips out. There was a lot of people coming in to talk and, and give presentation. There was all sorts of experiences like junk couture and the law program and the mini med program and all of that sort of stuff. So it is an amazing year in many senses to to uh, try. OK, but I'll let Ms. Uh, Mulcahy explain and, and speak more closely to that next week. But for tonight, if you are thinking about choosing either transition year or QQI4 or the established leaving certificate when the options are made out or sent out to you as Mr. Green will send them out through VS where you will be asked to pick and choose. So at least you have an idea as to which of those options you're going for. So transition year, you don't need to do anything except to tick that box, say yes, uh, and not pick any subjects. QQI4, you just tick that box. You don't have to choose any subjects. It's only for the next part, if you're going on to the regular leaving certificate, that you need to think in terms of subjects. OK. So. Uh, uh, we have, OK, this looks like it's going to be really amazing. OK, go back. So I mentioned the leaving certificate vocational program or links. OK. Let me explain what it is and this and then we'll be moving on to the regular leaving certificate. It's not recognized as a full subject for colleges. So if a college or um, in order to get into a college course, you were told that you have to have six subjects. OK, LCVP links cannot be a subject. You have to have six subjects and you can have links as well. The important thing in relation to links is that it does provide you with points. 
So if a person was to do this course uh, or this module, if you want to call it that, it's two classes per week over two years, okay, fifth and sixth year. It's assessed by an examination, which is 40%. That examination usually takes place the first Wednesday in May of sixth year. So you have that exam done by the middle of May. And the portfolio, which is a project effectively you've been doing through fifth and sixth year, accounts for 60% of all the marks. And that's finished by May of sixth year. So you already have that section of that course done. If you can get a distinction in it, okay, which is approximately 80, 85%, you'll get 66 points. Okay. If that, that can be the difference between a, a substantially, you know, large number of points in your overall, if you are comparing it with, let's say, me only getting um, an ordinary level six or an ordinary level seven uh, in another subject like maths or Irish or something like that that I mightn't be great on. So it will allow you to automatically, and it does it automatically, put in the higher points if you do better in your links than you did in your worst sixth subject, they will automatically put the points in. But we'll explain that in more later on. Just in relation to the clause then. Okay, 60 to 70 percent of our students will continue to third level. And that is, you know, representative of the community that we live in. 15 to 20 percent go on to trades or apprenticeship. 15 to 20 percent go on to post leaving certificate courses or into training or directly to the world of work. Okay, so we have a, a mix of students and what it is that they want to do. Some are going to go back directly onto farms. Some are going to go into training in places like Chagisk. Some are going to go into apprenticeships. Some of them have jobs or, or work that they want to go into. So there's quite a mix of what people do. And then three to 5% of the students repeat Leaving Cert. Now, those of you who are maths minded are going, if I add all these up, I'm getting more than 100%. It's a variation, but it's around about this. That is how it works in some, some years, okay? So it's how we are kind of putting it together. So here is the established leaving certificate, and this is what has to be happening. If you're going on directly into fifth year from third year, or you're going from, fifth, from transition year into leaving certificate fifth year, you have to choose seven subjects, okay? The best six subjects out of those seven will count for points. OK, and they are done in your leaving certificate exam at the end of sixth year. Core subjects are English, Irish and maths. You have to do them. If you're exempt from Irish, then you can substitute another subject instead of Irish. But you have to have a reason for it being um, exempt. The subject groupings fall under the sciences, the languages, the business, the practical, the applied sciences or the arts, humanities. OK. And then we also have non-exam subjects, including guidance, religion, physical education, and IT. Now, physical education is become, has changed and is now one of the options in relation to an actual exam subject. Core subjects, these are the essential ones. These are the ones you have to do. So English, maths, Irish, if you're not exempt, okay? These you must be doing and you must do them in school. So there are approximately 20 other subjects or 20 subjects in total that we would be trying to get you to make a, a choices about. So how do you choose the subjects? It's kind of a hard thing to do. So the first thing is after your core subjects, those three, you're looking at four more. What are you good at? Okay. What are you good at? What are you good at? Not just in school, but what are you good at at home? What will you study? Okay. What are you interested in? Because you'll study it if you're interested in it. Okay. And the more you work on it, the better you get at it. What are your interests? And those could be your interests outside of school. So if you like tinkering with cars, or if you like building something, or if you really like baking and cooking at home, or if you whatever, okay, you'll find that there are uh, subjects that link in with the types of things that you're good at. The next question you have to ask yourself is, are you thinking of going to a third level course? Are you thinking about going to university or an institute of technology? Because then you have to take into account what are the entry requirements that that college requires, or maybe even that course requires, okay? So to give an example, if I was looking to try to go and study medicine, okay? Whether I like it or not, there are only five medicine colleges or courses in the country, okay? And these courses require, in four of them, require me to have English, Irish, and maths, those are the core, no problem, but I have to have two lab science subjects, okay? So I need chemistry plus one other, so that could be biology. That's already five of my seven choices gone. 
and it also requires me to have another language okay so that would be if i have french or german or, or spanish that's gone into it that's number six and that leaves me with just one pick of subject so it depends okay i need to think about what it is that i'm i'm trying to get involved with the entry requirements for the college and the entry requirements or the subject requirements for the course so how to choose your subjects what are you good at what will you study what are your interests and then you match that with are you going to third level what are the requirements okay so you need to have a look at that okay and then you have to be a little bit realistic okay we have to be realistic what can i achieve realistically in terms of my my results okay or in terms of my achievement i would love to be an astronaut unfortunately that's not going to happen okay that's not going to happen certainly not at the moment anyway okay so the points system is this all right and this is an example, okay? So 90 to 100%, 80 to 90%, 70 to 79%. It's a little bit different to what parents might have experienced themselves. And the grades are now called H1, H2, H3, or at ordinary level, O1, O2, O3. And beside them are the points that are allocated to each of those. So a student takes seven subjects. Their best six will count for points. And they take all of those, the best six, and they add them up, and they see what they get. But... It only applies to the colleges and the universities. It doesn't apply to going into apprenticeships. It doesn't apply to going into training. It doesn't apply to lots of jobs, okay? It doesn't apply to lots of courses, except universities and the Institutes of Technology, either in Ireland or abroad. It's a league table, okay? So the number of people who are applying for a course or a place, that's what sends the points up high. If you have 60,000 students doing the leaving certificate this year and they're all trying to get into the one course and there's only 35 places, well, you can think about what kind of points would be involved. OK, so it's a league table of choices and indicators only. And sometimes it's actually fashionable. Sometimes so they go with um, a number of years ago. The situation was that uh, crime scene investigation was very popular in programs on television. OK. And for a couple of years, things to do with forensic science, uh, you know, were very high in terms of their points on the uh, on the league tables of, of choices. Your issue is your best subjects, your best grades will give you your best points. OK, so if you are good at something, you'll probably do well at it and you'll probably pull out good results out of it. OK, and that's the most important thing for for us in that sense. So I'm going to try to simplify this as much as I can. These are the three most asked questions on the subject choice night. Do I need a language other than English and Irish? Do I need a science subject? Can I do a subject I did not do for the junior certificate? Well, the answer is kind of a little bit complicated, but it depends. For the languages, the language groups, all National University of Ireland universities, the NUI, require you to have English, Irish unless you're exempt, and one other language. For every course except the courses in science, engineering, IT or nursing. So effectively things like if you wanted to do arts, if you wanted to do business, if you want to do law, if you want to do medicine and architecture, you do have to have another language at one of those universities. OK, so the core subjects, English, Irish, in this case, French or German or Spanish or another modern European language. So I think that there are about 18 on offer at the present moment. So between you, you know, Polish and uh, Russian and you, you, Lithuanian, Latvian, okay, there's all, all available as well. To answer the science question group, do you have to have a science subject? Well, these are the core science subjects or the main science subjects, okay? If you are looking at anything to do with science, okay, so be that from nursing to general science uh, to even things within um, agricultural science, okay, that could be, uh, and you could be looking at anything to do with health, human health, okay, animal health, veterinary, the whole lot of them, okay, they are all going to have an element of science in them, and you would be very much advised to have a science subject. If you don't have a science subject, you probably won't be able to do it. Now, Ms. O'Leary, in a few minutes, we'll be looking at uh, an app or a, a system that you can use, a very handy, actually, tool that we have on the system to allow you to check whether or not what courses would be 
ruled out if you didn't take a language or what courses would be ruled out if you didn't take a lab science subject. OK, these are the core ones, physics, chemistry, biology and agricultural science. OK, so those are the, the main ones that we would have as a sciences group. Um, applied mathematics, not really acceptable in terms of as a, as a, a lab science subject. OK, so I'm going to move kind of fairly quickly through this one and I'm not going to spend an awful lot of time on it. But if you can see that the slide is quite complicated, so you need to please check colleges for courses that you might need at this stage if you're thinking about it okay obviously things like if you wanted to do primary school teaching then you need to have irish and not alone do you need to have irish but you need to have irish at honors level and not alone do you need it at honors level but you need it at a h4 okay or a h3 okay so h4 or better okay and there are some courses and some subjects that are, are available that are, are looking at uh, specific subjects in relation to the practical subjects that we have available, engineering, construction studies, technical drawing or DCG technology. And I'm putting home economic, social and scientific into the practical subjects. It's an applied subject in that sense. Business group, accountancy, business studies, economics, social studies would be the humanities, art. OK, that's practical in the history of art, music. We have history, geography. OK, society and politics or politics and government. OK, and I think that maybe the new Leaving Certificate PE course is going to fall into either the social studies humanities or it may fall into a cross between the sciences and that. OK, but that's the new course that is available. So just before we get on to this slide, I'm going to sort of say, OK, if you know what it is that you want to do next, if you think you know what you want to do after after the Leaving Certificate, then it would be really good to do a little bit of research and find out what subjects might you need. OK, and that's what you're going to be putting down. If you have no idea what you want to do, then the best advice we can give you is to err on the side of, of caution where you'll be able to open yourself up for everything. So I would suggest that you would take one lab science subject, at least. You would, if you have a language and you're reasonably OK at it, continue with your language. OK, and then that means that you're taking two other subjects that you really like or that you're really good at or that you would be really interested in and would be willing to work at. OK, so those are your four codes or your four subjects. So what do you do? It's important that you put down the choices in order of how much you want them. OK, so you're going to be given uh, next week or might even be tomorrow uh, if, if for Mr. Creedon, your uh, list of options that come out on VSware. But it's important that you put down the four subjects on top of the core that you're doing, the four choices that you're making in order of preference, please. OK, so the subject that you want most from the four or five that you are choosing, please put those down. The one that you want most as number one and then the subject that you want the most after your number one, put it down as number two. OK, and so on and so forth down to three, four and five. The reason that we're asking that is when we get all the information back and put it into the, the, the computer, it will give us a band, okay? And the banding will tell us how many students are looking for biology, how many students are looking for art, how many students are looking for, and how many times we need to put a subject into, you know, one, two or three bands so that we can make sure that most people will get it. So far, OK, up until now, it's been about 80 percent of the students have always gotten their first, second and third choices. OK, so 80 percent is pretty good. When you start moving down into the fourth or fifth choice, OK, it can become a little bit more difficult. So what I would ask you is to make sure that you have chosen the one that you want most to do. That should be your number one, the next most number two, the next most number three. OK. And then you send that back to, to Mr. Creedon. OK, you submit it through VSware. And it's probable, OK, that the a second round of choices will be made based on your banding or the bands that come out. OK, but Mr. Creedon will probably talk to that as well himself. OK. Put up some helpful advice sites. OK, so I'm just going to mention these, even though they're uh, Miss uh, O'Leary is going to talk a little bit more about them. So Careers Portal, there's a tab on the, our own Colossal website. You may mention that in your school journal, pages 14 to 32. There's lots and lots and lots of information. Qualifax.ie, 
and the NCCA, which is the National Council for Curriculum and Assessment, who create the subject and what are the content of the subject. And then there's a good video that you'll find in classroomguidance.ie, which is a seven minute version of what I've just done. And at this stage, I can pass over to Ms. O'Leary. And I will stop sharing my screen and Ms. O'Leary take over. Okay, so I'm going to go through how do you actually go about or what do you need to know in order to make a choice? <clears throat> so and uh, you might need know what you want to do after school. Um, can I ask you there, Mr. Landers, can you see the slide still? You can? I can see the slide. What do I need to know to make a choice? Yeah, yeah perfect. Perfect. So you might know what you want to do after school or what you want to do for a career. But if you know what you definitely don't want to do, it's a great help so that you're OK with eliminating certain career and course options by not having certain subjects. OK, because as you know, not having certain subjects will eliminate options for you. So you need to know as well how you learn or perform best or worst. And that would be true in relation to whether you're going to pick QQI4 or where, whether you're going to pick Leaving Cert. You need to know how it is you prefer to learn. Like, do you learn, prefer to learn by doing, uh, like skills demonstration or practical means, or do you prefer to learn by theory? And I'm going to show you later on, and we have the information also in the journal on page 25, the breakdown of every subject in the Leaving Cert, how what percentage theory, what percentage exam, practical project, etc., so that you know what type of learning you'll be doing in the subject and to, to be able to decide whether that will suit you. So you need to know what tasks, activities and environments you enjoy so as to identify subjects and areas of interest. So if you enjoy working in a workshop, well, then you might enjoy engineering or you might enjoy construction, for example. Um, you need to know what subjects you have performed well in in the past and which subjects um, term reports suggest you will perform well in in the future. And I'll be talking about this a little bit later on. What subjects, for example, woodwork links to construction, metal work links to engineering, you know, certain subjects link on to other subjects in the senior cycle. And for certain skills based subjects, it might be difficult to do it at higher level if you hadn't done it at junior cert. So I'll talk a little bit about that later. You also need to, to read and consult the information given to you in your subject choice handouts and reports. So the handouts are in the journal and I'll be talking about those pages in a second. So on to the next slide. So I, I just briefly advice from from six years on subject choice. I ask them every year, you know, what, what would your advice be? Don't follow your friends into subjects that might not suit you. Be your own person. Don't overestimate your abilities. Know your level. OK, so be honest with yourself. Like, you know, don't be taking chemistry in order to do medicine if you're not someone who's doing all the higher level subjects as it is, because you might be taking a subject that you might necessarily be good at. You might be able to do at higher level. Uh, thinking that you might be able to get 650 points and you mightn't be that mightn't be your lane that mightn't be where you're at because you might be already doing three honor level subjects so I'll, and i'll elaborate a little bit on that later and uh, no requirements before you choose your subjects so be aware of third language requirements for NUA colleges etc and i'm going to show you an app that can help you know which colleges require it and i'll also show where in your journal that information is also and um, pick subjects with a good balance of project and practical work in a balance that suits you best. If you pick subjects that are all theory, well, then they're all going to be based on an exam in June of your leaving cert year. So you're going to have to do an awful lot of learning. Try and hold it all into your head and regurgitate it in the exam. And that's a lot of pressure. Whereas if you mix it up with a few subjects that have practicals and projects, you're taking a bit of the pressure off. But equally, you don't want to be having too much projects that you're swamped in March, April. Of, of your June, of your leaving cert year, so it has a balance is always good. Um, you have to have an you uh, you'll have an idea of what suits you and how you got on in your in your written project work, practical work, exam based stuff from junior cert CBAs and stuff like that, and also you know your term exams, your Christmas exams. You'll know teacher from teacher comments and that they'll say you know maybe class work better, exam result disappointing. You know, so that's somebody who'll be good at projects. Um, rather than the exam and those that information you can always access on VSR and it's great information. Project work can help spread out the work, as I said, a bit more rather than having all your marks based on exams in June. But 
if you're bad at time management, you don't want to have too much project work. If you're someone who has hand, has, hasn't handed in projects or has, has been handing in stuff late, like be honest with yourself about how you are, do you know? Um, so as I said, the useful resources, I'm going to show you a little bit now about those as we move on. Um, I'm not going to stop too long on them now. I'm going to show you the Qualifax app. Um, I'll show you the Careers Portal tab on our own website. And this presentation, we'll be putting that in there for you to look at later if you want. And I'll also show you where in your journal you can get information to help you, not just with subject choice. Like, it's not just the day you pick your subjects and the day you fill in your CEO that are the determine where you'll get your dream course. It's what you do every day. Whether we, and that's why it's in your journal, because you have to think about the decisions you make every day. Are you going to drop a level in a subject? Well, that information needs to be in the journal because you need to know what the consequences of your decisions are. So that's why all that stuff has to be there and with you and in your mind all the time. So useful pages in your journal. And I did say in the meeting notes to have your journal with you, if possible. So you'll see there pages 14 to 32. And I have put in there all the minimum entry requirements um, in terms of languages and in terms of subjects. And there's one example there that you'll see on the screen. For example, chemistry is essential. You'll see there, I call that grey stripe. If you look at the grey stripe, that lists all careers there that that subject is essential for and I call it the grey stripe of doom that if you didn't have that subject you well you couldn't do that career so if you didn't have chemistry you couldn't do dentistry you couldn't do veterinary you couldn't do dietitian in DIT you couldn't do medicine in UCC now it's also very desirable for nursing paramedic etc but it's not essential and over on the right hand side you'll see there it's a lab science subject which you'd need for nursing or You'd also need for PE and maths and DCU. So you'd need that for a few things. And you can see exactly what each subject is required for. And that's on uh, page 14 of your journal. OK, so the, the all these academic mentoring and monitoring pages are pages 14 to 32 of your journal. So that's very handy to check. Well, if I don't, as I said, it, it's good to know what you're happy to eliminate. So if I don't have chemistry, am I happy to eliminate dentistry, veterinary, dietitian? If you are and you don't, you can be good at chemistry, then you know, OK, that's fine to leave that out. So um, you can see there, there's 14 to 30, there's more information there and there's information on language requirements and things like that there as well and what you need them for. And I'll show you an app that helps you with that as well at the end. So another thing, as I said, that's useful to know. And again, this is in page 25 of your journal in a, in a table in your in your journal. The only subject that's missing from it is the PE and I'll explain to you what the breakdown of that is there. But you'll see there from that graph that the subjects that are the black uh, bar part, it's a bar chart. So the black bar shows how much exam is in that subject. The green shows how much practical is in the subject. The purple, uh, the purpley pink is shows how much of an oral exam is in that subject. And the, the blue shows the written or project work. So you can see there if you're someone that's really good at exams, well, then you might be choosing, you know, subjects that are all exam. But if you're someone that does better where there's a bit of a project, you can see there which subjects have a bit of a project in them. OK, so and also like, you know, even by looking at the books, if I picked up a biology book, it's probably the thickest book in your, that would be in a student's bag because it's all learning off because it's all exam based. So if you're really good at learning lots and lots of things off, maybe that's for you. But if you're someone who who is not good at that, Maybe it's not for you, it's not for you. So, as I said, um, the only subject there that's missing is the new subject of PE and the new subject of PE there. If if it's not in your journal, if you want to write it down there on page 25, so you'll have it. The exam theory is 50 percent. The practical performance where you're videoed doing um, two different types of sports. It could be a field sport and a dance or whatever. That's 30 percent. There's uh, no practical project as such, but there is a portfolio that you have to write up and there's an oral exam. So it's important as well to, as you go on through your leave and search year that you keep an eye on this because sometimes people can go down the rabbit hole and spend ages working on a practical project and not bothering to study for their for their exam or not finishing off the pro portfolio or the journal that has to go with the practical project. And then they end up wondering why they didn't do as well as they thought they should. Maybe they did a superb project. Maybe they got top marks in the project part, but then they thought they might get an A and then they didn't get it. So it helps you to focus on what you need to focus on. 
So what am I aiming to get? And again, this is also in the journal on page 24. What grades do I need? OK, so this is kind of a summary table of uh, points. So I put in not it doesn't not every course in the country is in that, but the, the main kind of look at. So if you want to do medicine, veterinary, dentistry or, for example, actuary, you you'd want to be getting 550 to 625 points. 625 is when you've honours maths and you get the bonus points. So you'd want to be getting all H1s and H2s really. OK, you could discount one subject, but you'd be want to be all higher level. You could afford to have one ordinary level subject and still be in the running. But mostly people who are at that level will be doing all higher level. OK, so if you're not in that situation and you're doing three ordinary levels, really and truly medicine, veterinary, dentistry, that's not going to be mathematically possible. So I wouldn't be scuppering your chances of getting something else that you might like, for example, veterinary nursing. And it might also be high enough points, but that would be within your grasp. Um, and I wouldn't want you to scupper those chances by choosing a subject like, for example, chemistry, with a mind to do veterinary, then ended up taking on another ordinary level subject in, in chemistry and also not having the points to get veterinary nursing. So you have to be realistic, as, as the recommendations from the sixth year students said. And as I said, that summary table is in page 24 of your journal. Now. How, well, how do I know which subjects are, are, are you, I'm likely to get a, a good honour in? Usually what happens with students when they're picking subjects is this. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm just going to have a drink. So what usually happens now is that they have no problem picking the first two and maybe even the first three because they'll have their minimum entry subjects. And then they'll have subjects that they like and then they'll be like, what am I going to pick for my number four? And then you have to pick five subjects in total because they'll try and give you four out of your out of your favorite five. So you're saying, what am I going to pick for my fourth and fifth? So it might be just that you're picking a subject that is the, the least worst option that you don't hate and that you have a fair enough chance of getting an honor in, you know, to getting a higher level uh, grade in. OK. And if you're really trying to get pints and you're really trying to get up the table, uh, that table that I showed you, you're trying to get get pints. You might be just picking subjects that have a fair chance of getting good pints out of. So if we look at this table here that I'm showing you, you'll see that, for example, um, if you look at, you can see there the the A stands for Ardlevel and the G stands for Ganalevel. And you can see certain subjects, it's harder to get uh, less people do it at higher level. OK, so for example, if we were to look at um, chemistry um, so we have fair enough, we have about uh, a fair number of people doing that at higher level. But if you look over at the red column, you will see that the failure rate in that subject is quite high. So as comparison to another subject, like, for example, biology, the fa failure rate might be lower. So or the failure rate in ag science might be lower. So if you wanted to have a science subject and you were someone that you did OK at science, OK, but you got maybe C or C, like grade C at junior cert or something like that, you might be as well to take on one of the uh, sub science subjects that are less difficult and less difficult to pass and, and pass to higher level paper. So you have to be kind of use your head and I can send uh, this isn't in the journal, but I can send uh, when we open up the chat at the end, I'll send I'll upload that. Um, I have a, an Excel sheet with all, all the subjects on it that show um, what, what, how many got did higher level in the subject and how many did ordinary. So that you can kind of see, well, which subjects are, do most people do higher level in? So most people, for example, in construction would do it at the higher level, similar with art. So if there are subjects that you will say you did woodwork at junior cert, you did art at junior cert and you need another subject that you can do at higher level, maybe that might be for you. So that's another way of looking at it. As I said, it's the fourth and the fifth subjects can kind of flummox people. They don't know what to put in. What will if you're if there's no obvious choice, go with the choice that's going to give you the best points and that you don't hate. Now. So, as I said before, you focus on the choices you make every day and how they affect your ultimate goal. And again, that is in your journal, that page. So if you do know what you want to do, eventually in fifth year, you'll be writing in there in your journal what points you need to get, what grades you need to get in each subject, and you'll be ticking off each time you do an exam if you're getting them. 
So um, it's it's spot you do every day, really. That's the dream killer. If if you don't do what you're supposed to be doing your homework, and if you don't keep it, whether you're hitting your targets or not. So it's very important to use your journal properly. Um, and as I said, if you do ever want to change a subject, uh, we allow like limited amount. If there's places available very early on in the term before Halloween, there might be a little bit of changing around. We're hoping that you'll have your research done and that won't be the case because you might, you know, there might be room in the class that you want to get into. But in your in your journal there, you're, you have to sign off on it. Your parent has to sign off on it and a guidance counsellor and um, Mr. Delahunty will have to sign off a new change in a level. It's quite a serious thing, and you have to go through in your journal, you know, the consequences of that, be it to change a level or change a subject. Now, useful tools. So I'm going to just take that down, and I'm going to share my um, my online stuff with you, um, some of the useful tools. So as I mentioned Qualifex already, I'm going to show you now how that Qualifex works. So. Before I do that, I might just show you our careers portal page where this presentation will be posted. So on the regular uh, Collage de Dunis gig um, website, we have a careers portal page here. And there's loads of, there's a notice board on this or any careers events that are happening or virtual events. And there's also where we put our presentations. And we also within this website careers portal, there's also useful subject choice stuff if you click into it. Um, so this is our, our website. So as you can see there, um, there's points calculator. There's lots of different stuff. There's a events, and we'll have our presentation up here. And there's also um, you can go in and look at self-assessment, career interest, and and look at all the subjects. There's videos about the subjects, etc. If you go under media as well, so there's lots of information there that's going to help you. But in addition to that, I'm going to show you the Qualifex uh, tools that will help you understand what. Uh, courses um, absolutely require a third language, require a science subject or require a particular subject so that you'll know if you're not picking that subject what you have eliminated. So if you go onto qualifax.ie, click in as a student and if you go down here you'll see useful tools and within that then you have lots of useful tools like a points calculator and an interest assessment to give you a chance to find out what kind of things would match your interests. But this is the important thing that we're working on today is the minimum subject requirements. So if you click into that and you look at leaving cert subjects, you can see, just make it a bit smaller, you can see, get it to show you third level courses that may or may not require the following subject. So for example, if I pick a third language and I click, now you can refine it by county, etc. but I'm just going to click search. And I can see there that, um, and this surprises quite a lot of people, only a total of 169 courses um, require a third language. However, 1,371 courses do not require a third language which is amazing. And a lot of people think, oh God, if I don't have a third language, I can't go to college or I can't go to university. And that's not true. So I can go in here and see, well, which which ones, what, what are those 169 courses? And I can view courses and I can see there, I can look over the four pages of uh, courses that require it. Now, accounting here in UCC requires it, but if I was to do accounting in, in CIT, it wouldn't require it. So it just shows you the specific course and the specific colleges that require it. OK, now I can do a new search there as well. So at this time I might search for a science subject. So I might say, well, what courses require a science subject and search? And there are uh, 167 courses that definitely require a science subject and I can view those courses. OK. And you can go along with that. That also works for the levels as well, you know, the languages and the levels. So I can see there are all the different subjects and I can also if, do the different maths. And this surprises people as well that quite a lot of, so, of courses accept foundation level maths. So if I click on foundation level maths, I can see there that uh, 515 courses definitely accept foundation maths. Um, does not accept foundation level maths, 1036. But it would be better to have a pass in foundation maths and get into one of those 515 to get into zero if you're borderline. So that's a very, very useful tool um, to have. 
So I don't think, um, I think I've shown pretty much everything there now. Have I, Mr. Landers? Is there anything I'm leaving out? Uh, no, I think between the, the, the journal and the Olifax and the Grace Portal, yeah, you have them all covered. Yeah, I mean, I, um, I can open up the chat if anybody have any questions, or is Mr. Creedon ready to come in and demonstrate what it is people have to do next and what they have to do to pick their five subjects? I can say a few words if you want, Elaine, but I won't be that long. Yeah. OK, well, just just to let students know what next, what they have to do next. OK, so what's what's going to happen now is I suppose first the third year students, you're going to have to make a final decision as to whether you're going to move forward to either fifth year traditional leaving cert or fifth year QQI programme or whether you're going to um, opt for the transition year programme. Now I'll be speaking with you next um, Tuesday night with Ms Mulcahy about the option of fourth year. Then we'll probably give you until Friday to make a decision on that and uh, we'll open up the, the VSware portal. It's probably opened up already for um, for transition year parents. Um, it, a notification should have gone to the parent app. If, if not, um, let me know and I, I, I'll release it again tomorrow. Uh, and we're going to keep that open to about the 12th of April. So what you'll see will be just um, a series of columns. And as Mr. Lander said earlier, make sure the subject that you want um, most or your most desirable option is number one, two, three, four, and, and, and put a bit of thought into five as well. Now, the likelihood is that you will get, definitely you will get three options. Most people will get their four options, but you might have some students picking combinations of subjects that we only run one class in, for instance, DCG, German, music, physics. If you went for that combination, uh, it might be a little bit more difficult to get um, those four. So that would be important. So that will be sent out to parents and with your son or daughter, then you can um, send them back into the to the to the parent app. Once 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 I get all the subject choices back from all the students who are opting for the traditional leaving cert, we will then put it to the computer algorithm where it tries to uh, make sure that we meet the needs of the vast majority of students. And, and then we will come back with the bands and we'll have a second go at it. Uh, and then if there's some students uh, with problems in terms of their subject choices, we meet them individually when we're back in school uh, after the Easter holidays. So it'll take a few weeks to get through, um, but I think you've been you've been given great information there from from Sean, Elaine, and Claire gave you great information as well regarding the the, the level four QQI program, which is an excellent program for a certain cohort of students who want to progress in that particular manner. So you've you've you've, you've fantastic choices. Uh, the strength of the Kalashta. There's no doubt when you hit fifth year with the subject choice options that you do have. And um, myself, Mr. Delahunty, and Ms. Tarrant, myself, Mr. Delahunty over the last number of years would very much have been tracking students in terms of their their their, their academic performance. If, if you're like me, if you're in the average ability bracket, if you pick the right four subjects, um, take honours English, which most people do, and have a go off honours Irish or honours maths if you're capable of it, 450 points plus is, is very much within people's reach and we're seeing that i can see i can see it again with this year six years it's all about um picking the right subjects and getting the mix of subjects right so it is worth taking time i know the transition st students would have met with mr larry mr landers and careers class so they probably have an advantage i do sometimes worry about third year students coming straight through some students are well able for it other students are not Unfortunately, most years, the students that struggle the most in fifth year uh, in regular fifth year are the students who have come straight through because um, they, they may lack the maturity for the year or they might have been better off spending a year in transition year uh, and getting ready in that particular manner. So we, we will speak again with the with, with the, the students in, in assemblies in school, but the parents, you're going to get notification through the parent app. Uh, take your time, put in the subject choices, rank them, really put really put focus on what's number one down to number four and number five. I think we've six in it um, and then we generate the bands and, and then we will talk to students individually if it's not working out in your particular favour. Um, so that's how, how, how it is working um, over the next couple of weeks. Uh, other than that, I don't think I have much to say. I want to say thanks to Mr. O'Leary, Mr. Landers and Ms. Ryan for tonight's presentation. And um, to, uh, it was excellent and again it's very very informative um, and I would think fifth year and sixth year is a massive opportunity for all students and um, you know we, we, we look forward to starting next September in, in a completely different fashion to what we've experienced in this year. I've, I've nothing else to add I can answer any questions that they come up in the chat. Okay I've just
to open up the chat now. So if you have any questions, please ask the question in the chat or you can put up your hand. No, hopefully we've answered most of the questions already. So. I think it's also possible, Mr. O'Leary, for people to, you know, send in uh, questions or queries to us afterwards. Uh, they can do it if it's parents. They can do it through the the students, uh, sending it in through Teams, um, or to us on our on our emails if they wish to through the school as well. Okay. Can I just ask a question there, Mr. Green, just in case people are wondering that the the links is kind of an add-on subject. Like I suppose seventy percent. Mm -hmm would use it for points because it's the equivalent of having another higher level subject. So if you're not doing all higher levels, you can count that for points. But it's not it's not going to be in the subject option pick. Sure, it's not uh, Mr. Creedon. The, the option subjects that you're picking no, what, from are no, not no. core, not LCVP. The way we normally um, um, do the links is when the students come back in September, uh, we meet the students we and then we ask, first of all, we have to see do they qualify in terms of the subject combinations, which is a strange thing with the LCVP to have to have a certain combination of subjects. And then we we asked them whether they want to um, complete the links program over two over two years, which is an hour a week or, or, or 80 minutes a week, depending which timetable we're running. Uh, but it's an opt in for students, but they have to have the qualifying subjects which can be found on the education website. We, we can send them out anyway later to people. So, okay, but, vast, so we're, we're but if you're sorry, if you're doing if you're doing five honors or four honors or three honors or even six honors, if you apply yourself to the links, and but it's one of those programs where you have to do exactly what the teacher tells you, if you know, because they have to do CVs, different types of reports, they have to be done exactly as instructed by the teacher. It's very easy to get the merits if you want to get the stitch. Okay, so there's a few questions coming in. So when do we pick yeah. them? Um, over the next couple of weeks, it'll be released to, 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 to um, students and the closing date will be the 12th of March, but it'll be done through the parent app. So you'll have to um, talk to your parents uh, about that and, and then you just submit them. And when they come back to school after Easter, if we haven't done it already, we'll be able to meet people and, and finalise all the options. So I have a question there. Um, what is, the, can, is there a limit to how many subjects you can do? Within this, within the school, there would be you will be taking just seven subjects in school. Um, it's it's your best six subjects out of seven that are are counted for for points. Uh, you mm -hmm. don't need any more than six or seven for any of the other courses or for any of the other types of work like apprenticeships. Um, but anybody who wants to take eight, nine, or ten, you're really pushing you know the, the limit of your ability and scope. I think. So yeah. we would advise just the seven, and those are the seven that you take in school. But one or two students will always take a, a say, an extra language, or they might be taking a, a, something else outside of school. That's perfectly fine. But uh, we wouldn't be advising it in general. Applied um, maths there, there Jamie. Here. Norm yeah. yeah. Sometimes yeah. Apply applied maths would be offered, but it runs normally at a timetable. Runs at the same time as the LCVP or the links option. But again, it depends on the numbers that are looking to do it. Quite, it very much suits students who pick physics and are doing honours maths. Um, would that be an add-on subject? It wouldn't be yeah. one considered as one of the option subjects, but no. it'd be a bit like links in the sense that you might do it as an add-on, but it's not considered one of your no. five option picks, no. picks well, right. shall we say. Okay. Yeah. yeah, there's a question there in relation to music for, if you didn't do music for junior cert, but you play an instrument, can you take it up for the leaving cert? The answer to that is actually yes. Uh, but um, theoretically, it, it depends on what level you play the instrument at. Now, some things like piano, you would have uh, exams that you might be doing outside. If you can take it to the standard of level five or level six, then yes, absolutely, wouldn't be a problem. If you're not taking uh, an instrument that has levels or that has examinations, then what I would suggest you do is you'd have a chat with Miss um, Barry, okay, the, the music teacher, just to have a chat, uh, and maybe she would have a look at what level or what standard you are playing the instrument at, uh, and get uh, give you an idea as to whether or not you'll be able to cope with the uh, with the subject. And if you can and read, that's music, an excellent it's question because uh, because the skills based subject, the subjects where you have to demonstrate a skill. Mm -hmm. For example, in music or art or, or technical drawing or 
um, engineering or also in technology, it's quite difficult to take up those if you've no previous experience of that subject or a linked subject if you want to take it at higher level. So you have to try and make your, your options subjects at higher level, if at all possible, especially if some of your core subjects are at ordinary level. You really need them to be at higher level, like to do your best and to give yourself the best range of options in term after you leave school. Isn't that true, Mr. Creedon? Yeah, I, I, um, what I would be saying is most students find honours Irish difficult and honours maths. I think a lot of us would be in that bracket. Um, I would say nearly 90% plus of the students will take honours English. And really, you should be pushing for four honours subjects in your in, in your picks, in your, and, and that would be really important. Um, we've seen students uh, pick up subjects that they would never have done in junior cycle, and uh, they might have experienced in TY, and do really, really well. And again, quite often, that's because they bring a good attitude to it. So uh, the vast majority of subjects can be picked up again in, in fifth year. But as Ms O'Leary said, you might have to work a bit harder if you don't have the certain skills that might be necessary for some of the practical subjects. But if you bring the right attitude and application, anything can be achieved. But honours English, most students do. About a third will do honours maths. About a third of the group will do honours Irish. Uh, and, the, and the rest really need to be pushing for um, the four higher level subjects. I would also say if you're not, if you think you're not capable of doing any subject at higher level, you probably really should be looking at the QQI level four. Would I be correct in saying that? I think that would be, you know, you should be yeah. really considering that option. Yeah. Yeah, because um, uh, like the, if you're not doing any higher level subjects and things like that, like the, the QQI is developing aspects and, and other aspects that is going to make it more likely that you will progress and that you will progress to PLC and you will progress to apprenticeship, you know, because and it's preparing you more like there were a lot of the QQI level fours are, are way more prepared than the academic leave insert for the next phase. But it's just with the academic. And we leave and serve for your chase and points. We don't have we don't have the time to teach those things that we have the time to teach the QQIs. So once they move on into PLC, they're kind of a little bit more ready. In fact, a lot of them have had interviews and stuff applied for the PLCs now that the, the leave and certs haven't got to that stage yet. You know, so it look it it depends on your own situation. I have a question. We have a question here. Do you have to do Irish? Can you switch it for something else? No, un unfortunately in Ireland, unless you've got an exemption under the circular that the government issued, you have to take Irish. Yeah. OK, and at Irish time, if you're an Irish, what usually happens? In our school, if you're exempt from doing Irish, you're most likely doing uh, extra English with our EL teachers, or you could be getting extra support if it's if, if you're exempt from Irish on the grounds of dyslexia or a special learning issue. Um, that's what would normally be happening or has been happening for the last number of years. And there's a question here. Is it a good idea to do a leave and cert subject that you didn't do in junior cert? Um, in general, no, unless you have a huge grow for it and a huge talent for it that you, you're fairly sure it has been demonstrated. You know, um, and if you've um, got, you will say, let's say you've done TY and you've done a good bit of work. Catching. Sorry, did someone say there? Yeah, no, I was going something. to come in there, Mr. Leary, and say something very similar to, to what you were about to say. Sometimes students pick up something in, in transition year. Uh, Mr. Creedon also mentioned it, uh, a taster of a subject and find out that they really like it. And it may also link in with stuff that they are interested in doing at home, you know, stuff that they might be uh, tinkering around with or playing around with or being involved in at home or outside of the school and find out that they have an aptitude for it. And I think that under those circumstances, it's worthwhile having a conversation or a chat with us about that uh, as to whether that subject is something that you could take up. Um, again, if, if you're willing to work at it, and if you are really clear about what is the content and what's involved in the in the subject, then I think that it's possible. Yes. OK, and just to help you with clarity about that on page 25 of the journal, there's a breakdown of the subjects. You can see how much is practical, how much is project, how much is written. So you get a sense of it as well. And again, that's the beauty of TY is that you get to try things out and it's given you that extra year to find out, well, what am I really good at? What am I really interested in? And explore a bit more, you know. So if you're really on defence and you haven't, you're in third year and you're thinking, am I really ready to pick my subjects and go into fifth year? If you're not ready, well then that's what the transition year is for. Yeah. 
The question asked there in relation to applied maths, is it available as an option for leaving certificate? It, generally, it's offered if somebody is taking higher level maths and has applied mm -hmm. and has done physics or is doing physics as well. So mm -hmm. um, maths at a higher level, physics, and then applied maths, depending on the number of students who are interested in it, mm -hmm. applied maths can be offered at that stage. But I it's not we, you're going to be choosing from your top five. I think we have three students doing it in six year this year. Um, and I'd say, to be fair, all of those students will be hitting over 500 points but because they are top notch in terms of honours maths and honours and, and honours physics, probably chemistry as well with it. Yeah. yeah. OK, have we any more questions coming in there now? Some of them were asking where will they pick it? It's on the, the, the VSware portal, isn't it? Uh, but it yeah, it'll be, it'll be, yeah, it'll be released to parents. I'll either text out a link to the parents phone or it'll appear in a notification on the parent app, uh, but it will be going out to everybody. Uh, I just can't, I can't put in the names of the third year students until we're sure that they're going for either the traditional Leaving Cert QQI or, um, or, or, or a regular fifth year. But there'll be plenty of time, folks. I'm, I'm looking at the 12th of March has been the closing date. So don't worry if you if you if you put it in at the last minute or now, that won't matter. And um, it's just the most important thing is that you're thinking about what subjects you want and you get the ranking right. Will they have to do a second uh, round if they, you know, if, when the bands come out, Mr. Preden? Um, it could happen. It could happen if, if 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 I'm not happy with what I see in terms of the students getting um, the vast majority of their options, we might have to look at it again. But um, but normally what happens, most students get their four picks uh, the first time round, and then I need to, I might need to talk individually with students, or we might run an, a, a second band. So it really depends on on how the um, because the bands are are determined by the students' choice. So our, like we don't have the same band every year in fifth and sixth year. It changes based on on the demands that the students coming into the year group have. So it could happen. Yes, that's, I suppose that's a simple answer to it. Yeah, there might be a second round. Thank you. OK, can I ask a question there? If you're choosing TY or if you're choosing QQI, do you still need to fill in that? No, no. Okay. I hope to only have the names of the students going into fifth year because otherwise it would be unfair on the other students because we won't be getting an accurate um, uh, return on, on the students just subject choices. OK, OK, that's, and just, that's just clarifying. That talk is going to be on, is it next Tuesday night? Yes. In Gy. Yeah. Now I suppose we never said that. I think this is there 19 or 20 subjects being offered on the list. Um, now every year for the last number of years, we ran all the subjects. But if it, it does come so that only one person opts for a subject, well, it's unlikely we'll run it. And it, you know, if it's three or four, it's unlikely that we can run it. Uh, but that hasn't happened in the last number of years. We've we we ran subjects with only 10 or 11 students in it because again, I think that's the culture and the tradition that the school would have had that we try to offer yeah. the students a broad curriculum and, and, and we try to maintain that at all times. Yeah, there's 19 at the moment if you include yeah. the new subject E. So there's actually yeah. 19. And yeah. they're all, you can see all the names of the subjects on page 25 of the journal. The only subject that's missing, we sent an updated stuff to the printers this year, but they never updated the stuff. They looked at it and thought it was the same and didn't bother. But the, the new subject PE there, you can add that to page 25 on the bottom there, and, and that's your list of subjects there. Yeah. I'll just type it into the chat. So uh, full subject list on page 25 of journal, um, PE, add PE to that. <clears throat> Can I just re remind people again, and uh, maybe um, Ms Ryan, if she's uh, is available on this, can just clarify that students who are interested in doing the QQI or students who might be identified as being suitable for QQI level four will be contacted and will have an opportunity of talking with Ms Leary, um, Ms Ryan uh, and Ms Little as well. Yeah, we will have a kind of like a similar thing, um, an information kind of where we'll go through in a bit more detail. Um, of what kind of like touch on all aspects of the, the course. Um, we've only given a very brief outline tonight and we'll do that before the end of the school year. Mm -hmm. And it's been very it's been very successful, Ms. Ryan, hasn't it, in terms of like the, the numbers of students who have taken it up and the number of students who have, have enjoyed actually doing it. Yeah, and um participate like 
they learned so much and what Miss O'Leary was saying, like they are so ready to go and transition to another PLC course. They have so many skills that someone doing like a traditional leave and cert are kind of behind on and um, that they really do gain their independence. And it it just it's a step. It's a step to go to another four or go up to a five that it kind of there's the world is their oyster really from doing the course. Yeah. Or even we have students who are we have a student who is applying for a level seven apprenticeship in IT and he's kind of tossing and turning between that and a commie chef apprenticeship, which he can do in Clan Mill. He also does. We've also a student who wants to go on to into a level six in jewellery making. So she's going to do a five and then a six. We have another student who wants to do a one year PLC and then go on into dental nursing. So I'm going into third level. But then equally, we have a student who really enjoyed their work experience, wants to go continue working during the day. They're going to do a welding course at night and next year they're going to apply for a fitter apprenticeship. That's the direction they're going. So it just like it's but it's all about just whatever's going to progress the student forward into what their area is and making sure that they have the skills and attitudes and knowledge to make them do the best possible when they get there. And the feedback we've got from students that have gone on is that, oh my God, the PLC was so easy because I did communications before, I had done IT before, I had uh, understood the QQI system, I had done project work, I'd done skills STEM, I'd done work experience, you know, I knew how to use Moodle, I knew how to use the system, so like it is a great prep. That's great, thank you very much to, to all of you for that. <laughs> So that question is in again, yeah, your parents will be sent the link to the app, OK? So I think that's it then, if we've no other questions. And as I said, if you have questions afterwards, you can send messages to us in the chat anyway. And mm -hmm. I've recorded this. I whittle it down a little bit.